Hi students! On tonight's lesson we are going to be comparing fractions using benchmarks. Let's start by reflecting on our unit learning goal. Remember it's how can I demonstrate what I know about fractions and decimals by reasoning about their value. In order to get us closer to that goal, let's go ahead and look at what our lesson goal is for tonight and that is how can I use benchmarks to compare fractions. Well, I would like you to go ahead and copy down in your notes this information about benchmarks as well. A benchmark is a known size or amount that helps you understand a different size or amount. In this lesson we will use 0, 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths, and 1 as our benchmarks to help us compare fractions. Go ahead and write that down. Don't forget to title tonight's lesson and put today's date. Let's start by comparing a couple fractions together with this word problem. Zach made a popcorn snack. He mixed 5 eighths gallon of popcorn with 1 half gallon of dried apple rings. Here's our question. Did he use more dried apple rings or more popcorn? So this is what we're trying to figure out. Well, there's a couple ways that we can compare fractions. One way is to use fraction strips and we'll compare 5 eighths and 1 half and record on this model below. So if we know that he has 5 eighths gallons of popcorn, I'm going to come down here where the eighths are, and this is my popcorn, and he used a half gallon of dried apple rings. I'm just going to call that apple rings. Is that okay? And then let's go ahead and mark what we know. So he has 5 eighths gallon of popcorn. So over here, I'm going to shade in 5 eighths. One, two, three four and five and I know he had one half gallon of the dried apple ring so that is this much. You can see quite clearly by using these fraction bars that he has more popcorn than apples, apple rings so we can see that five eighths is greater than one half so Zach used more popcorn. You can also see it by just a simple model where we have drawn right here the little happy faces and we have a total of eight and we've shaded in five of the eight. And then I went ahead and used eight again here and then I shaded in half of eight which as you know half of eight is four. So we colored in four of the smiley faces and again you can see that five eighths is greater than one half. Another way that we can compare fractions using benchmarks is by using a number line. So again, let's go back to that same problem. We know that he has 5 eighths gallon of popcorn and 1 half gallon of dried apple rings. So I can see right here on this one, I've got 1 half right here. I'm going to just kind of put an X there. That would be how much he has in the apple rings. Okay. Remember what you know about equivalent fractions, so you can see one-half is the same thing as two-fourths, which is the same thing as four-eighths. Now, Zach also mixed five-eighths gallon of popcorn, so here's what he have, has with the popcorn. So if this is the popcorn, and this is the apple rings, Looking at our number line, we can see that 5 eighths, again, is greater than 4 eighths. So we know, still, that he used more popcorn. Okay, here's a page that I want you to record in your notes. Think about what you already know about equivalent fractions. And then think about this. What is the relationship between a fraction's numerator and denominator when a fraction is equivalent to a half. Now, what I want you to do is explain how you can tell 5 twelfths is less than 1 half without using a model. Go ahead and pause this, jot down what you think is a good explanation, and then come back and we'll check our notes. Welcome back. I hope you wrote something like this. I know that 6 twelfths 
is equivalent to one half. And we know that because the numerator is half of the denominator. Six is half of 12. Since five is less than six, this means that five twelfths is less than six twelfths, or one half, solved without a model. Now I want you to explain this one. How can you tell seven tenths is greater than a half without using a model? Okay, use that same kind of reasoning. Pause the video and then come back. Okay, this time I know that five tenths is equivalent to a half. Again, because five is my numerator and it's half of 10, my denominator. Since seven is greater than five, then seven tenths is greater than five tenths because five tenths is the same thing as a half. So once again, I've proven seven tenths is greater than a half by using, using my um, logical thinking. Okay, here's another problem for you to jot down. It says a family hiked the same mountain trail. Evie and her father hiked five twelfths of the trail before they stopped for lunch. Jill and her mother hiked nine-tenths of the trail before they stopped for lunch. Who hiked farther before lunch? So we're trying to find out who hiked farther. Would it be Evie and her dad or Jill and her mom? Remember at the beginning of the lesson, we talked about how we were going to be using benchmarks to compare our fractions. So we're going to be using those benchmarks of 0, 1 fourth, 1 half, which you can see would be halfway between 0 and 1, and 2 fourths is equivalent to 1 half, 3 fourths, and a whole. And if I have 4 fourths, that is the same thing as 1. So we're going to be comparing 5 twelfths, which is Evie and Dad, to Jill and her mom that hiked 9 tenths. Okay? Let's go ahead and use these two number lines to make this comparison. I know that halfway between 0 and 1 would be a half. And I'm going to have, go ahead and mark that on both of these number lines. Now, for Evie and her father, they hiked 5 twelfths. So let's go ahead and mark in twelfths what a half would be. So half of 12 is 6, so 1 half is equivalent to 6 twelfths. Now, down here in Jill and her mom, they hiked 9 tenths, so I know I need to make my denominator, I'm going to have to write it kind of over here to the side, tenths. Half of 10 is 5, so on this number line, my halfway mark will be at 5 tenths. So let's look. Evie and her father hiked 5 twelfths. Let's go back to this one. 5 is less than 6, so I know that Evie hiked 5 twelfths. So that's going to be 5 twelfths is less than 1 half because 5 is less than 6. Now let's look over here for Jill and her mom. Jill and her mom hiked 9 tenths. Well, if I know 5 tenths is halfway and she's hiked 9 tenths, I know 9 tenths is a lot greater than a half. So I could go ahead and answer this question by just comparing it to the benchmark of a half. And I can see that Jill and her mom hiked farther before they ate lunch. Let's go ahead and see with the number line by comparing it to also those benchmarks of 1 fourth and 3 fourths and kind of see exactly where they fell on here. I'm going to go back to Jill, or excuse me, to Evie and her dad. So if I know 6 twelfths is a half, and I know 1 fourth is halfway between zero and a half, then I know half of six is three. This is three twelfths. So Evie hiked five twelfths, so three, four, five, six. This is about where she was. Oh, I'm sorry, I called it five six. That should be five twelfths. Sorry about that. And then I've got Jill and her mom. They hiked 9 tenths, which I'm going to go ahead and think about things that are from 1 half to a whole because I know she's greater than a half. So if I'm thinking about this, I've got tenths. So 5 tenths is here. I could go 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths, and this is the same thing as 10 tenths. 
So she would have hiked, and if it were three-fourths, would be halfway between here. It would be about right in here. It would be the three-fourths. And she's hiked even farther than that because she and her mom hiked all the way here to nine-tenths. So the benchmark that they're closer to is a hole. And Evie and her dad were closer to the one-half benchmark. Okay, here's a couple that you can go ahead and write down. We're going to compare these fractions and decide which one's greater than or less than the other one. So let's start with 6 eighths and 4 sixteenths. There's a couple ways that I can compare these. I could think about half and start there. So I'm even going to go ahead and draw my number lines because I've got eighths and sixteenths. I'll show you a little bit what I'm talking about. So halfway would be here and this would be um, 6 eighths. So if I think about 6 eighths and what would half when we're talking about eighths be? That would be 4 eighths. And I can see since I have 6 eighths this is going to be 6 eighths, I'm just going to write myself as note, is greater than a half. Then I have 4 sixteenths. What are, where is the halfway line going to go on sixteenths? Well, if my denominator is sixteenths, half of that would be 8. So I've got 4 sixteenths and half would be 8 sixteenths. I can see right away that 4 sixteenths is less than half. So I can tell right away that if 6 eighths is greater than a half and 4 sixteenths is less than a half, I know that this is greater than this. So you can see 6 eighths would be 4 eighths, let's see, and 8 eighths would be my whole. And halfway between 4 and 6, this would be our 3 fourths mark. And another way to say 3 fourths is 6 eighths. So that's here. And if I'm talking about sixteenths, eight sixteenths is a half. Half of that would be four sixteenths. That's my one fourth mark because one fourth is equivalent to four sixteenths. So comparing this, this is less than this. Now let's look at four twelfths and five eighths. Again, I'm going to start off by comparing them on a quick little number line. Okay? And since I'm in twelfths, I know six twelfths is my half. And when I'm talking about eighths, I know four eighths is my halfway. I can tell you right now if this is eight eighths is the same thing as one, and twelve twelfths is the same as one. So I know four twelfths is going to be down here and 5 eighths is going to be about here, I can tell 4 twelfths is less than 5 eighths. Okay, make sure you have everything down that you needed for your notes, and now it's time for your check. Go ahead and complete the lesson check that goes with this video, and make sure you bring all of the work with you tomorrow because we'll be starting the lesson with a review and a discussion of those problems. Have a good evening.